hello and welcome to this short tutorial about how to animate sprites for video games using Adobe Animate, previously known as Flash. For this example, we'll use an already finished design of one of our characters. First of all, what you need to do is to make groups containing all the different elements of the animation. Adobe Animate or Flash will respect them and it will be easier to put them into different layers. Once everything is pasted into Flash, all the groups remain intact, so you can cut them or copy them and set every element into a separate layer. Now just take the time to repeat the same process with every element that needs to be animated independently. This process will be short or long depending on the complexity of the animation and the graphics. You can see that every part of the animation is in its place. Note that every color identifies a different layer. Now that everything is in its place, what you need to do is to transform all these different and separate elements into symbols. Symbols are required to animate things through twinnings in Flash. Select every element and transform them into a different symbol. Once again, this process will take you minutes or seconds depending on the complexity of the animation and the number of layers. Next step is rigging. Rigging is about building a skeleton or any other system to shamble different parts of the same animation. In our case, we won't use the bones tool provided by Adobe Animate. Instead of that, we'll use some anchors between some elements. can establish some rotating points. For instance, the arm will be connected to its shoulder. Rigging can be a very sophisticated process in many cases. But in this case, our animation is quite simple. And now it's time to animate. First of all, we need to know what we want to do. In this case, we have an idle animation. We want to see the character breathe, basically. So a slight movement up and down will be enough. First of all, just select every element, meaning all the layers, and duplicate them. Now you have two states for the animation, up and down. So select the correct frame, in this case the middle one. Just select all the elements and move them at the same time. As you can see, this already produces an animation of rough one, because it's based on two frames, basically. Now we needed to repeat the movement from down to up in order to make a loop. So what we need to do is to repeat the first frame at the end of the animation. In order to make this animation smoother, what we need is to use twinning. In this case, a classical one. This means that animate or flash will calculate the movement between one frame and the other. We 
remember you can edit the acceleration or easing of every animation. This will allow you to control the movement in a more realistic way. If you export the file, you can see that we have an animation. It's a very, very simple one. Probably enough for many projects. But in this case, we want to achieve something more sophisticated. In order to avoid the flatness of the previous animation, which is uh, basically a block moving up and down, what we need is to separate the movement of every element using different rhythms, using different directions. You can see how the movement of the hair is quite different now. Just moving some pixels down, we get a different effect. Same happens with the eyebrows. Now we have a face with more life. This is a vital part of the animation. We are editing every element independently. We are letting them move in different ways. This will add more deepness. You can see how every tiny detail adds more life to the animation. Flat design, like in this case, doesn't mean flat animation. Remember that you're editing vector graphics, which are symbols at the same time. Meaning that it doesn't matter if you transform the instances of the symbol in stage, they will remain the same, fully editable all the time. Sometimes it's a good thing to distort the elements, not just move them or rotate them. You can see how we have distorted the melt code of the character, achieving a very organic result. Obviously, adding more frames to the twinnings will slow down the animation. Maybe a calm breath is what this character needs. After some tweaks, we have a final animation. Let's see some details. As you can see, the shield has a slight rotation, and the arrows a different movement. The different parts of the main code squeeze and open when the character goes down. The legs of the character are animated using a distortion up and down, with no need for more complicated animation techniques. The chain in the sword has an independent movement, adding some gravity notion. Of 
course, it's important to preview the final size of the animation. Sometimes you can waste your time working on invisible details that won't be visible in the final result. Once you have your flash file, you can open it in your browser. You can see how the animation works perfectly at any size. Working with vector graphics will allow you to have a perfect original that will be scalable at any size. Remember that if you can't use as a final output a Shockwave Flash file, you can export your animation as a sequence of PNG files. PNG files with alpha are a very common way to export animations. And that's been the whole process for an animation produced in some minutes. Thank you for your attention and see you soon.